Good evening, citizens of, of Portsmouth. Welcome to our city council meeting. I would like to now ask the Reverend Donna Linville, First Church of Portsmouth, to please come forward and provide the invocation. It's a great honor to be here in front of this distinguished council. Will we all stand, please? And I would like Kim Murphy, my prayer coordinator, and I brought all of you a T-shirt that said, Pray for Portsmouth. And it doesn't have any logo on it because our church is, believes in the covering of the Lord. And we're asking and letting you all know our church is committing to pray for Portsmouth. And so uh, we thank you for the honor of being here tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Mayor Glover and City Council. Let's uh, pray. Lord, we just thank you this evening for the opportunity and the time to come together, Lord, as a city, Lord. This is the nucleus, the heartbeat of our city, and the people here today, Lord, have petitions, Lord, to present tonight. Lord, our council, the people, the leaders of our city need your wisdom, your understanding, Lord, as the people stand before you this evening. We ask you, Lord, to let our hearts, Lord, pour out, Lord, our concerns, our grievances, our needs tonight. But we know, Lord, that you will be right here in the midst of us to give us that understanding and that wisdom that we seek. We pray, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to strengthen us. Thank you for the sacrifice of all of the people here, Lord, who have given of their time, Lord, their employment, Lord, their seeking of, of the needs and the provisions each day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've given this time and this moment, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, in every need, Lord, that you supply it as we know that you can. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, ma'am. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes? Present. Mr. Battle? Here. Mrs. Lucasburg? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mr. Woodard? Here. Mayor Glover? Here. And before I move on with our agenda and reading of the minutes, I want to recognize uh, two of our newly elected council members, uh, Councilman Mark Hugel, Councilman-elect Mark Hugel, and Councilman-elect Vernon Tillage. Also, I want to welcome back uh, Councilman Bill Moody. Yes. <clears throat> Members of Council, we have for our consideration the minutes of a called meeting on October 25th, 2022, and a regular meeting, a regular meeting on October 25th, 2022. Is there any discussions of the minutes? Seeing none. We are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. We have now come to the item on our agenda, which calls for a presentation of a proclamation for Small Business Saturday. Um, Economic Director, Mr. Brian Donahue, and Chairman of our Economic Development Authority, Mr. Ray Smith, gentlemen. I was sure. One, two. We're on, are we live? Yeah. Okay. I was sharing with the former councilman, Ray Smith. He knows the drill, right? <laughs> In any event, whereas 
the government of the city of Portsmouth, Virginia celebrates our local small businesses and contributions they make to our local economy and community. And whereas, according to the United States Small Business Administration, there are 32.5 million small businesses in the United States. They represent 99.7% of firms with paid employees in the United States are responsible for 62% of net new jobs created since 1995, and small businesses employ 46.8% of the employees in the private sector in the United States. And whereas 79% of all consumers understand the importance of supporting the small businesses in their community on Small Business Saturday, and whereas 58% of shoppers reported they shopped online with a small business, and 54% reported they dined or ordered takeout from a small restaurant, bar, or cafe on Small Business Saturday in 2021. And whereas Portsmouth, Virginia supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our communities, and whereas Advocacy groups, as well as public and private organizations across the country, have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, I, Shannon E. Glover, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia, do hereby proclaim Saturday, November 26, 2022, as Small Business Saturday in Portsmouth and urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. In witness whereof, and on behalf of the Portsmouth City Council, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Portsmouth, Virginia to be affixed this 22nd day of November, 2022. Thank you, gentlemen. in a few words, um, I, I want to thank uh, the small business community for what they do. Everyone knows that the backbone of the economy in the city of Portsmouth are the small businesses. They make up the lion's share of, of sales and goods transform, uh, transformations in the city. And we are very appreciative of them that we have this honor to recognize them on that day. And I will also take the liberty while I have the mic to uh, recognize our new uh, economic development director, Mr. Brian Donahue. <laughs> he, he's responsible for keeping it going. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Chairman Smith. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to uh, continue serving the city of Portsmouth and uh, supporting our business community. Um, as the chair stated, uh, the small business uh, community is the backbone of our economy. Over 90% of Portsmouth businesses are small businesses. So I encourage all of our citizens to support our business community uh, locally here, uh, not just on Saturday, but every day. Uh, they are uh, dependent on your support and um, they are here to serve you as well. So it's a, it's a pleasure and thank you for the proclamation, Mayor. Thank you, sirs. Have a great day. Madam Clerk, would you please read the council rules? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> excuse me. City council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice the timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. 
While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to the city council as a body rather than any particular member of city council staff or the audience and should be limited to matters that only the Portsmouth City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have now come to the item on our agenda, public hearings, and we do have a public hearing. Item 22-335, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the agenda item that we are considering at this time? Yes, sir. UP 2213 Parkway Plaza, resolution granting the request of Vermonica Smith for a use permit for an event space banquet hall in suite 3981 within the um, Parkway Plaza Shopping Center located at 3985 Twin Pines Road in the general mixed use zoning district. The future land use map of the Bill 1 Portsmouth Comprehensive Plan designates this property as multifamily residential. The property is owned by Parkway Holdings, LLC. The actual uh, resolution reads, a resolution granting a use permit, UP 2213, to Veronica Smith to operate an event space banquet hall at 3985 Twin Pines Road. Thank you, ma'am. Is the applicant present? Ms. Smith, ma'am, if you would come forward, please state your name and address, and you will have 10 minutes. Good evening, Mayor Glover, uh, City Manager, Chapman, and all of the distinguished members of this council. My name is Veronica Smith. My address is 4016 Oakhurst Road, Portsmouth, Virginia. And I want to first thank you all for this opportunity to stand before you. Today, I am here as a representative of the niche venue in lieu of requesting a use permit to operate a premier event space in the Parkway Shopping Center Plaza, located on Twin Pines Road in the beautiful city of Portsmouth. The purpose and heart of the niche venue is to provide a safe, professional, upscale venue where memorable and workplace events such as weddings, receptions, showers, seminars, art galleries, business networking, corporate retreats, and tutoring can also take place. Our heart is to uplift, strengthen, and add significant value to our community, to help build diversity and stability where businesses can continue to thrive in the city of Portsmouth. As the lead pastor of Impact Church, which is also located in the same shopping center of the Parkway Plaza, our heart's goal is to make our community and the lives surrounding it better. When it comes to the current goals of the niche venue, uh, there are several. Uh, to increase the success, longevity, and trust of the small business platforms in the Hampton Roads area, specifically in the city of Portsmouth. To maintain and create a healthy business environment that is safe and marketable, adding value to the city while also attracting long-term sustained revenue and reliability that reflects the heartbeat of Portsmouth and surrounding cities to be a trusted, reputable business where clients are eager to refer others and do business with on a continual or long-term basis, to improve property market value by growing and expanding into new business markets of event and rental spacing that is cutting edge and affordable. Future goals is to create a high performance, profitable business that can strengthen the economic structure of the city and the community to heighten market trends and generate high level sustained income where the business can expand into other cities and to market a professional franchise that can generate employment and be a starting point for other businesses to emerge. Uh, with all of that, that is the genuine heart and purpose of the niche venue uh, where the opportunities and possibilities are limitless. We have big vision for what's to come and I wanna thank you all again for this opportunity to stand before you today. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Yes, and if you would just stand there for a moment, okay. because now is the point where my colleagues may want to ask you a question or okay. two. So members of council, do you have any questions for Ms. Smith at this time? Councilman Woodard, sir, you have the floor. Thank you. How are you doing, Ms. 
or Monica. How you I'm doing? doing well, thank you. Uh, was there any conditions from the Planning Commission about your uh, potential project? Yes, there were a few conditions. I don't have them in front of me here at the moment. All the conditions that they set forth all have been met. Been met. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Um, does anyone, uh, any, anyone else have any questions for Ms. Smith? I do have a question. What, yes. what are going to be your scheduled hours? One, and, and two, mm -hmm. uh, do you plan on serving alcohol or anything like that at this venue? Um, the scheduled hours are 9 a.m. to 12 midnight, and alcohol will be permitted, but they have to go through the ABC licensing to be able to um, request a permit for alcohol to be served. Yes, sir. And last question, mm -hmm. do you have a strategy or a plan for security yes. if needed? Mm -hmm. We have a partnering security company that we're already working with. Uh, we have the cameras, which was one of the conditions that was set forth. Um, all of our cameras have been installed. We have a whole security system with 24-hour um, monitoring, cameras, all that's already been put in place. Yes, sir. Yeah. Councilwoman Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Smith, uh, thank you for the presentation. I see that there was a list of, of some community partners, uh, some civic leagues. Was there anyone who had any concerns about the type of venue um, that you're bringing uh, to this center? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. We communicated with all, um, specifically Peachtree. I spoke mm -hmm. to the directors of that. Everybody, they were fine. Great. They were okay. Yeah, Great. no no rebuttals or anything of no one saying no. Great, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Right. You may be seated. This is a public hearing, and anyone in the audience uh, who did not sign up for this public hearing, this is your opportunity to come forward and speak on this public hearing matter only. So if you wish to come forward and speak about this public hearing, please step forward, state your name and address, and sir or ma'am, you will have five minutes. Seeing none, this public hearing is closed. Members of council, is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, then we're ready for a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Wow. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Our next item, City Manager's Report, item 22-336. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting an allocation of $42,432 from the State Compensation Board Technology Trust Fund and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 grants fund for use by the Portsmouth Circuit Court Clerk's Office to fund technology maintenance and improvements. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-337. Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we're considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of $708,000 from the Department of Criminal Justice Services and appropriating said funds in the FY 2023 Grants Fund to provide funding to the Portsmouth Sheriff's Office for the salaries and benefits of 12 full-time school resource officers. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Very well. Is there any additional comments on this, this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-338. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance appropriating $310,083 from the fund balance of the general fund to the general government category of the FY 2023 general fund budget for the purpose of completing a procurement disparity study. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. 
Move for approval. Second. Second. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none. Then, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Item 22-339, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting Virginia trees for clean water grant funds in the amount of $4,634.35 from the Virginia Department of Forestry and appropriating said amount into the FY 2023 grants fund for use by the Department of Parks and Recreation to plant trees at City Park and Churchland Park. Thank you, ma'am. And council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. We do have one speaker, one registered speaker for this item, and it is Mr. Conrad Shrevsventer. Mr. Shrevsventer, sir, if you will come forward, state your name and address. You will have five minutes. My name is Conrad Shrevsventer. I live at 3706 Greenway Court East, um, the 23707 um, zip code. Sir, and could you please bring the mic up a little bit more so we can hear you? I hope you. this is better. Okay. That is better, yeah, that sir. Is much better. Um, I live in Portsmouth, but I work in Virginia Beach for Virginia Beach Parks and Rec, and this is the type of stuff I, I like learning about, that we are looking at beautification here in Portsmouth, and it's done through Parks and Rec. I, I am one day to work for Portsmouth Parks and Rec, and I just encourage more items specifically like this to help the city out, done through uh, a great system like Parks and Rec. So do this, and of course, do it many more times. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And council members, um, we, uh, we already did the motion in the second, so Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Item 22-340, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this one, this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting settlement funds in the amount of $315,332.05 from the National Opioid Settlement Fund Trust and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 Behavioral Health Care Service Fund for use by BHS for proof abatement purposes as defined by the Virginia Opioid Fund and Settlement Allocation MOU. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-341. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting an Edward Bram um, Memorial Justice Assistance Grant in the amount of $111,232 from the U.S. Department of Justice and appropriating said funds in the FY 2023 Grants Fund for use by the Portsmouth Police Department. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Berg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-342. Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we're considering on this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting bulletproof vest program funding in the amount of $59,405 from the U.S. Department of Justice and appropriating set funds in the FY 2023 grants fund budget for the purchase of bulletproof vests. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Is there any additional comments on this, this item? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Item 22-343. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we're considering pertaining to this item? 
Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting hazardous material emergency response pass through funds in the amount of $30,000 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire Rescue and Emergency Services in its capacity as the lead agency for the Southside Regional Hazardous Material Emergency Response Team. Thank you, ma'am. And council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item three, excuse me, 22-344. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering concerning this item? Yes, sir, an ordinance accepting an emergency management program grant in the amount of $57,992 administered by the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move to adopt. Second. Thank you. Any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-345. Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting the return of unexpended funding from the FY 2022 PPS general fund budget in the amount of $4,641,523 and appropriating $2,041,523 of said funds to the FY 2023 City General Fund budget and transferring them to the school projects category of the FY 2023 City Capital Improvement Fund budget. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-346. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting funding in the amount of $486,588 from the Commonwealth of Virginia and appropriating said amount in the FY 2023 Porson Public Schools General Fund budget. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-347. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance to reappropriate unexpended funds in the amount of $6,611,872.17 from the FY 2022 Porson Public Schools General Fund budget to the FY 2023 Porson Public Schools General Fund budget. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move to approve. Second. And we do have one registered speaker for this item, Mr. Mark godaldig yatrowski And sir, if you would state your name and address, you will have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and other neighbors. I came here principally to congratulate this council because for the last two years, for the first time I can recall in the 25 years that I've resided in Portsmouth, council has had a practice 
of reappropriating unspent funds that the school system was unable to use during the fiscal year past. Um, it used to be a point of contention where the council would try to claw back a certain amount of that unspent money. Uh, of course, Portsmouth is never in a situation where our coffers are overflowing and any unspent money uh, is an opportunity, presents an opportunity. But there would be great opportunity presented if council ended up its budget year in a similar situation. They wouldn't have to ask anybody else for permission to reappropriate the money because they have a fund balance where the school board does not. And so I, I think in the previous fiscal year, uh, you'll all recall that the first half of that year was in the pandemic. And there were certain functions that the school system could not perform because of lockdown and the necessity of going remote to have any sort of instruction. So there would be certain monies not spent. You wouldn't be driving school buses. You wouldn't be feeding students at school. And so on. So I'm happy to see the monies that were left over from fiscal year 2022 in the school budget being returned to them so they can make use of them belatedly because there are many mountains to climb that were due to the pandemic. And although the schools did receive federal funds, which were a help, they didn't address everything. Uh, one thing that comes readily to mind is the learning disruptions. The opportunity to do remediation for students whose needs were not met in a rem remote learning environment is critically important. Our students only get one K through 12 opportunity in their lifetimes. So we need to give them the maximum support possible to ensure that they get everything out of that experience that they could. So council, congratulations, because there's been no squabbling over this among you despite the fact that you come from different perspectives and points of view, it's nice to see you all united in terms of providing adequate funding for our school system and the students therein. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any additional discussion? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-348. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we're considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance to reappropriate unexpended funds in the amount of $3,113,381 from the FY 2022 Porson Public Schools textbook fund budget to the FY 2023 Porson Public Schools textbook fund budget. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Our next item is item 
little bit twisted up here. Item 22-349. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance to reappropriate unexpended funds in the amount of $4,258,881 from the FY 2022 um, Porcelain Public Schools Food Services Fund Budget to the FY 2023 Porcelain Public Schools Food Services Fund Budget. Thank you, ma'am. And council members, we are in need of a motion in the second. Move for adoption. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-350. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance to reappropriate unexpended funds in the amount of $4,004,537 from the FY 2022 Porson Public Schools Grant Fund Budget to the FY 2023 Porcelain Public Schools Grant Fund Budget. Thank you, ma'am. And Madam um, Council Members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move, move to approve. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lu Lucasburg. Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Item 22-351. And Madam Clerk, would you read the ordinance that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. An ordinance to reappropriate unexpended funds in the amount of $3,128,184 from the FY 2022 Porcelain Public Schools Risk Management Fund Budget to the FY 2023 Porcelain Public Schools Risk Management Fund Budget. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Is there any additional discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Item 22-352, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution that we are considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. A resolution authorizing the city manager to accept the terms of drinking water construction fund financing from the Virginia Department of Health, including forgiveness of the entire principal amount of $150,000. Thank you, ma'am. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move, Move. for adoption. Second. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Battle? Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Woodard? Yes. Mayor Glover? Yes. Item 22-353. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution that we're considering pertaining to this item? Yes, sir. There's two items for this item. So our first one is a resolution endorsing the city's 2023 General Assembly legislative package. Yes, ma'am. And council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move adoption. Second. And we do have a registered speaker for this item, and that speaker is Mr. Mark Godaldig Yatrovsky. Sir, please state your name and address, and you will have five minutes. Good evening again, Mayor, Council, and fellow other neighbors. So the General Assembly packet, as it was written in the uh, addendum to the agenda, is perfectly fine with me. My concern lies with an item discussed afterwards, a tenth item, a tenth hour item, so to speak, um, which is the reinstatement of last year's recall modifications. Um, this requires an amendment to the city charter 
<laughs> and uh, it's, it's interesting that the defeat of the item was ascribed to partisan politics. Uh, what, what was not mentioned is the fact that um, there were other issues with it, including a lack of support for the change from the people of Portsmouth. Oh, I, I should, for the sake of transparency, uh, identify myself as a principal in the effort to recall two members of this council. And we are operating under the current charter provisions. So I do have a vested interest. My, my interest is in seeing that we have a fair and workable process for recalling elected officials. I consider the current charter provision fair because it requires a high threshold of signatures. Those signatures have to be vetted by a judge of the circuit court. And if the signatures meet the legal requirements, then an election is scheduled wherein the people of the city get to determine by majority vote whether or not there is sufficient reason to recall the people named in the petitions. So there is an opportunity for somebody being recalled to make his or her own case against it in a public manner, and then the voters decide, just as the voters decide decided for the original election. The proposed language would make this more of a judicial process. I don't believe that's necessary. The justifications that have been presented in arguing for this before the General Assembly last time around was that there's a recall every week in Portsmouth. That hasn't happened. The last actual recall election that took place under the provisions of the charter was in 2009-2010. That's over a decade ago. There have been other attempts subsequently, but they haven't even reached the point of scheduling an election. So I think the hurdle is set high enough. And I don't believe that you need to tinker with the charter language. Although this is not a part of the package as it stands, as you discussed in the work session, you're planning to move forward with bringing it back. <laughs> the other point I will make is that this is an item going to the 2023 session of the General Assembly. The people who should be making the determination as to whether it goes there should be the 2023 Council, not the lame duck Council. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Whitaker, you have the floor, sir. Right. Just, just so that um, make sure the information goes out uh, correctly, um, it was not a 10th hour uh, item. Um, this issue had been raised uh, previously uh, by this council. Uh, the only difference is that tonight we had our actual senator and representative present to raise the issue before them. And our representative, uh, Don Scott, uh, mentioned that our present uh, recall process is an outlier compared to other jurisdictions that follow the state. And that's all that this is trying to do is put it in line with the state. Also, the reason that 
uh, that particular uh, charter request was denied, um, it was because of an unusual move uh, by a person who is not even a resident of Portsmouth and is a Republican representative who had a vendetta uh, against our representative and therefore moved at the last minute through a technicality to cause that provision to fail. And so it was very much uh, political in that sense. Uh, however, it was put forth by our Senator Louise Lucas, and it went through the Senate, and then at the last minute it failed because of a technicality in the House, and it went down along party lines. It was supported by all of the Democrats, and it was not supported by all of the Republicans. And so I just want to make sure that that information goes out correctly and not along the lines of the wishes of what you suggested. Thank you, sir. Are there any other comments or questions related to this matter? We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes, we have now come to item B. Yes. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution we are considering with this item? Yes, sir. Resolution endorsing the city's 2023 federal legislative package for the 118th Congress. Thank you, ma'am. And council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. Council members, do we have any? additional discussion on this item seeing none madam clerk would you call the roll please yes sir mr barnes yes mr battle yes mrs lucas Burke. yes mr moody yes dr whitaker yes mr woodard yes mayor clever yes we have now come to item new business under our agenda number 22-354 and vice mayor barnes and dr whitaker are there any appointments to bring forward for consideration. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have uh, an appointment uh, to present to council, and I move that the council appoint Cliff Hayes, our IT director, to the Regional Broadband Authority as an alternate. Thank you, sir. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Item 22-355, and Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution we are considering pertaining to this item? A resolution establishing Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022, as a general holiday for the employees of the city of Portsmouth. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council members, we are in need of a motion and a second. Move for adoption. Second. second. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mayor. If you don't mind, because this item was a late addition to the agenda, even though we got it on, if we could please open it up for speakers. Yes, ma'am. I would agree. Um, are there are there anyone? Is there anyone who wishes to come forward and speak on this item? You come forward. You will have five minutes. Seeing none, then the item is closed. And Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, sir, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Battle. Yes. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Woodard. Yes. Mayor Glover. Yes. Council members, do you have any additional items to submit? Yes. Dr. Whitaker, sure you have the floor. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would like to distribute this information to council members. And, and to the uh, clerk also uh, hand out. Uh, 
and city managers. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. The information um, that I've passed out to my colleagues, uh, it pertained to uh, an article that appeared uh, across the nation. The Associated Press uh, reported it, and uh, probably many of the citizens um, heard about this. And that is uh, a California city uh, took a black family's land almost 100 years ago, and on June the 29th of this year, it was reported that the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors voted to return the ownership of this California beachfront property, which was about 7,000 uh, square feet of property um, that had been purchased in 1912 by Willa and Charles Bruce, um, became the um, Bruce Resort, and that land was returned back to them um, because it had been improperly taken. I raised that up in the context of what has been now reported to council uh, through both the uh, city assessor and also through the uh, email that council received from the city attorney. And that pertains to the Sugar Hill property. Uh, it was reported by our city assessor that the Sugar Hill property, um, which is um, part of that Penners Point community, that the Sugar Hill property um, was obtained, many of those properties were obtained by the city um, over several decades. Uh, our city assessor made note that there was a very aggressive use of tax sale uh, liens that were placed on those properties. Uh, subsequent investigation by a city attorney uh, has shown that that was the case on page eight of her report that she submitted uh, to us today. Uh, it makes a point to show that in the 1970s that uh, this council expressively embraced um, the uh, public uh, use of the tax liens on those properties. Uh, disproportionately to what we saw happening to other uh, locations and communities around the city. Therefore, because of that disparity um, and because of the use of the city using uh, tax liens aggressively on the Sugar Hill property, um, it's a tactic that had been used nationwide in black communities to get properties uh, either courthouses were burned in order for deeds to be destroyed, uh, tax property tax values were raised, or aggressive tax liens were, were placed. And what we're seeing happening since the 1960s in Portsmouth to Sugar Hill um, is exactly uh, that type of pattern. And so I would like uh, for to get a consensus of my colleagues to direct uh, the city manager and the city attorney uh, to report back to council uh, with the procedures in place to return those properties to those black residents whose properties were improperly taken through aggressive use of tax liens because of the expectation of developing that property commercially. And the only way to right that wrong is to do just as this California city did, is to do what's right and return those properties uh, back to those residents. And so I would ask that, Mayor, we would get a consensus of council. Uh, the Pennis Point community has been traumatized um, over the years. Uh, the Martin Luther King Expressway, again, a common pattern in black communities, putting interstate highways through black communities and dividing them. A common thread that had been seen um, was experienced also in Penners Point as is evident today. And so I would like for a consensus mayor council to direct the city attorney, city manager to come back to council with the uh, steps, procedures for returning those properties back to those families. Thank you, sir. And, and before we proceed with that particular question before this body, I, I would have to ask the city attorney to elaborate uh, because there were, there were some statements made 
that land was improperly taken. And I would, I would just ask before we go down that road uh, into litigation that we, we have proof that this land was proper, improperly taken. Uh, so if you could elaborate on your findings, ma'am, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, in an email that I sent around as a report back um, uh, around uh, probably about uh, one or two o'clock this afternoon, I sent my report back to you all, which included the answer to this council's request about 11 or more properties that had not been able to be sourced in terms of title that were in fact owned by the city based on the presentation of information by the assessor. Um, as you can see on the first page of that report, and I'm sure many of you haven't had a chance to review it, but what it did was identify which city, city affiliated entities had been involved with the Sugar Hill acquisitions and explored the history of those acquisitions. What the, uh, prelimi what the preliminary um, report from the assessor was, was that tax sales were used to acquire a number of those properties, um, as well as other means. In the report, uh, there is a chart of how the entirety of Sugar Hill had been um, acquired, which included a number of things, most of which were tax sales. And so um, that would be what the conclusion of the report was. I will tell you that a lot of the information was unable to be recovered because of the age and um, nature of the acquisitions and the property itself. Sugar Hill is a historic property located just to the, I'm gonna say the east of the Midtown Tunnel and Route 58. So what, uh, what my office did is we went out into that community and spoke with many of the people because oftentimes you can get uh, oral histories of, the, of what happened to people by those who are there. And many of those people described to me that their properties were subject to these tax sales. And so um, I think the um, facts of the matter are clear from the records that are received plus the oral histories, and those are outlined in my report. I can't make any further conclusions as to what was rightfully or wrongfully done. That is for city council to decide. And so I would submit to you that you can look at the report, which is the black letter description of what happened to those properties and make that decision for yourselves and then direct um, the appointees to do what it is that you want to be done next. Thank you, ma'am, for that, for that um, update. Uh, I have not looked at or reviewed the document. The fact that it was at the, the late hour, I'm sure many of my colleagues have not reviewed the document. So in the interest of us being informed properly and asking some questions of the attorney and the assessor, I think that at this time, we, we need to defer this and we need to, to look at the information, all of us. And I think we need to be given time to do just that before we make a decision. Ma'am, do you have something you would like to add? No, sir, I've made the statement that I made. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. And I you submitted the, the report. Yes, um, I have a request on the floor for consensus. I would like to um, read uh, what the city attorney uh, included in the report. Um, it said that the city council at the time also expressly embraced the use of judicially approved private tax sales to acquire lots. Notwithstanding, private tax sales were generally disfavored, are generally disfavored today out of concern that they do not involve a public auction and therefore may not maximize the purchase price. Moreover, Many historians have noted a trend starting in the 1950s of displacement and disinvestment of predominantly African-American neighborhoods for other economic development. These scholars cited municipalities' use of building code and state and federal laws to undermine residents and push them out. And that is exactly what happened in Sugar Hill. And so I have a request for a consensus. We have heard from both the city assessor and the city attorney, and both of their reports have been consistent. 
Thank you, sir, for your and, input. And, and if, we, if we are to do justice, and if we're going to talk about unity, then you can't exclude communities that have been treated like this. And so I would hope that my colleagues would uh, move forward on this issue. Understood, sir. And once again, uh, we will call for a consensus. Mr. Woodard, um, sir, you have the floor. Appreciate you. Uh, this is for the city attorney. Have we, um, if, if we would go forward with this, have we ad um, identified any recipients of these uh, parcels? Well, this is the first time that I've heard about this request, so I have not researched that issue at all, unfortunately. So, so I think with that, um, we will call for a consensus, but I go back to my original point. The fact that many of us have not reviewed all the documentation, I think, leads us least to be informed before we make an informed decision. However, I don't mind if you want to sir? I'll take it off. The, I'll take it off. If you're saying you want to read and we put it back on at our next meeting, I don't have any problem with that. That, that is all I'm saying, sir. I don't have any problem with that. So we, we need to review the information, and then we can certainly bring this back at the next meeting. Is that acceptable to you, sir? That's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is, that is what we'll do at this time. I would encourage my colleagues to read the document, and then um, we will have this item put back on the agenda for the appropriate um, action. Are there any other items uh, submitted by council members? Well, I would like to submit a couple. Um, first of all, I would like to say on behalf of the Portsmouth City Council, happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Um, and I would also add that um, we had the opportunity, some members of council along with our city manager to participate in the illumination parade. And I think uh, she is going to be telling you about that experience. Uh, but in any event, I wanted to convey that to everyone. Thank you all for uh, being patient with us uh, during this meeting and happy Thanksgiving once again. Is there any other items from my colleagues on council? Seeing none. Um, Item 22, I know, I'm giving, item 22-356, Ms. Chapman, are there any items pending? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do you want to talk about the grand opening of the casino before I that, start? That, you, you're there, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm happy to announce that uh, the Rivers Casino did announce their grand opening um, for January the 15th, so I hope to see you all there. Um, I have a couple of other announcements. Um, our Fuchsia's, our citywide camera update is scheduled to go live on December the 14th. And so I wanna commend our IT staff and our police department and with working with our vendors to make this project a success. So like I said, it is scheduled to go live um, mid-December. Um, we also, um, Chief Jenkins also submitted his uh, draft crime prevention plan to me last night. I will review that. Um, he has some additional changes he would like to make, so we should have that forthcoming as well. Um, applications are now being accepted online um, for our community crime reduction program. Um, if there are individuals in our community that have services or programs that can help and assist the city with reducing crime, we are now accepting those applications for uh, funding going forward. And as the mayor stated, um, the city of Portsmouth participated in the grand illumination parade in the city of Norfolk, and we took first place um, for non-commercial float in the category, um, in that category. And I wanna thank Parks and Recs, the fire department, and our high school bands for their participation in, in the parade. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. And I don't know why I didn't think of this, but today we had the privilege of swearing in eight new police officers in the city of Portsmouth. So I want to commend those individuals who signed up to do that work in protecting our city, their families, and certainly Chief Jenkins for and his entire department for their leadership in moving forward 
and we're looking forward to continue continuing to add uh, those public safety personnel as we go forward because we are committed to public safety, keeping our citizens safe and, and healthy. Dr. Whitaker, sure, you have the floor. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is for our city manager. At our um, next meeting, can we just get an update on where we are with the infrastructure um, grants that, um, that are being applied for? Thanks. Madam Clerk, would you please, uh, our next item is 22-357, non-agenda speakers. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the speaker's statement? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to the city council as a body rather than to any particular member of city council staff or the audience and should be limited to matters that only the Portsmouth City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Our first speaker is Mr. Merle Rutledge. Mr. Rutledge, sir, are you present? If you will come forward, you have five minutes. Okay, I don't see Mr. Rutledge. Our next speaker is Blair Vernon. Blair Vernon, if you would come forward, ma'am, please state your name and address, and you will have five minutes. Uh, thanks, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, my name is Blair Vernon. I don't really feel comfortable putting my address, but I live out here in Portsmouth. Yes, ma'am. Um, near High Street. I have sensitive ears. And it's kind of loud where I live. It, it would been kind of rowdy. So I just wanted to kind of calm down. I'm kind of near schools and stuff. <laughs> and um, it disturbs me. And I'm trying to go back to um, sleeping and school and everything else. So that's my concern. Thank you for everybody cleaning up. Uh, have a blessed one for this holiday. And um, one more thing, with the parking re record stretch, excuse me, for the scooters and the bicycles, I was, around the summertime, I was figuring if it's not that much traffic, it would be nice if y'all do that in the city of Portsmouth. For the little scooters, you know, the electric scooters, yeah. If they just block it off or, you know, have something for the kids to do and the grown people, because they have it in Norfolk, thought it was nice. They will have it here, the U scooters or whatever. But um, y'all have a blessed one. Thank you. Everything's cleaned up and stuff. Um, just one more concern is about unemployment, an issue about that. Um, I, I would like it. I know y'all just city council, but they have a law to make it harder for firing people who have um, issues. And um, it's harder when you have a family. And I want them to have patience with people and also have a training, a trainer located in these um, jobs and these professions for people who have disabilities and um, health issues, that they will have some kind of accommodation or somebody could speak for them, that they don't have to always call on a lawyer or somebody to represent them when, can't, when they can't speak for themselves or they feel annoyed. Because that's when crime happens. That's when homelessness happens, depression. Um, they keep talking about mental illness. We trying to prevent that. And I think that's one of the problems we need to start thinking about, like especially around certain times. That keeps our people safe. 
it keeps our uh, citizens safe, it keeps us safe, and we don't have to do this guarded gate stuff. But y'all have a blessed one. Take care. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for coming forward. Our next speaker is Cheryl Bryant. Ms. Bryant, ma'am, if you would state your name and address, you have five minutes. How you doing today? Good, ma'am. I really ma appreciate the opportunity. That light is kind of bright. I'm so sorry. Um, my name is Cheryl Bryant. I stay on West Norfolk Road in Portsmouth. I was born here in Portsmouth, raised partially in the city of Chesapeake, known as the daughter of Chesapeake in 2005 under the CHIP program. Traveled frequently to North Carolina growing up. Although there's a difference when it comes to operations, city to city, state to state, such as laws, procedures, enforcement, etc., I feel improvements can be done through unity. Unity, change of a mindset, and our opportunities within the community. The school system is broken. No child left behind. But pushing a student along uneducated, where does that lead them? Still left behind in time, meaning generational. Past, present, and future if no change. Issues with building and dress codes. The healthcare system also has failed us due to the lack of care of patients that are ill. The lack of programs, funding, limitations for waiting lists, Nobody in the U.S., better yet their own city, shouldn't be without health insurance. And, dem and dental needs to be promoted as part of health. It's a fact that oral health is very important. Just because someone has a degree, license, medical experience, doesn't mean that they have a passion and concern for people's lives. To take on a career that is mentally challenging Community centers and programs are designed to enhance the community in a positive way. I fear that there's, a, there's not a lot here offered in Portsmouth for the elderly, teens, convicted felons. There's no trade schools, really. To give people the opportunity to get involved, to, to develop unity, Knowing their value as an individual and building a strong foundation within the community is very important. Law enforcement. Their mission is to serve and protect the community and enforce laws. Their mission has nothing to do with their opinion for medical evaluation. It also seems to me that they're protecting their own. To briefly explain, I was in a situation where I needed medical attention. I was not given the opportunity nor offer any, but the other individuals involved were. All my rights went down the drain, just like the rules, procedures, and laws that were violated. Still to this day, I cannot get closure, and I get unanswered, unanswered questions. That's what I get. My suggestions, as far as the school division, there ought to be one day with kids do tutoring. It should be a tutoring day. That way, a day where they can catch up on schoolwork, find understanding into the agenda, or study what they have learned. Dress codes should be implemented to stop to help prevent bullying. Healthcare. All there there's programs under for under income individuals known as sliding scales, at least in the city of Portsmouth offer free dental unlimited services and have courses for individuals who decide to take on nursing as a career. Take quality evaluations for mental challenges that they come against, which will improve mind state patients and understandings of others, which some have lacked growing up. Community, more and better programs for teens, elderly, trade schools um, to provide a better life for convicted felons, and law enforcement. I would like to push forward for a city ordinance for a code, C code 22-83, I mean 80, um, 831, 
All four first responders, such as MSs, should do their own evaluations of the sick or injured themselves, not law enforcement. Law enforcement is to enforce laws. They're not fully trained for medical. I hope that my words of concerns and wisdom touch someone in a way that they will be more in tune of what's going on around them. To make changes, my father always told me, if you don't stand for yourself, you'll go for anything. Thank you for your time and keep faith alive. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker, Sergio O'Neill. Sir, if you would come forward, state your name and address, and you will have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, my fellow neighbors. Uh, my name is Sergio O'Neill. I live at 1420 Elm Avenue in this great city. Um, that's a good place to live. Um, I, I hope some will come and visit you know, more often. Um, thank you for our city for pay, finally paving that portion of Elm Avenue. It has been tore up for several years. Anyway, I'm here tonight to ask questions about um, our city hiring practices. I see part of our um, qualifications is an acceptable background, but I'm, I'm interested in do, do we have department heads or people in place that can override those backgrounds or can have some flexibility in what they deem as acceptable backgrounds? Because I've been informed that there have been several individuals that have, been, that have applied for city positions that have been turned down based on their background, and then there are others they have similar backgrounds and they have been hired on. So where is the discrepancy and the disconnect that and how do these things just appear to happen out of nowhere? Because I'm a firm believer in equal opportunity employment. I've been a manager for 15 years. I'm very well versed in how the law should work when it comes to employment. And if you state a statute says that the background has to be acceptable, that has to be applied equally across the board. Because if you don't, then you hold yourself in liability of facing litigation from those people who are not hired based on those backgrounds. And when you have people that are hired based on similar backgrounds. So if there is anyone in our city that has the, as far as city staff, that has the flexibility to override the background check requirements, then that needs to be made publicly known. Because um, what, what I'm starting to see is that we're, Hand, we are picking and choosing based on personal preference. And a lot of people with necessary skill sets that we need in this city to fill open vacancies are being turned down. Our departments are struggling. Case in point, waste management, which a lot of people have complained that their trash is not being picked up until late hours of the night. These people are working overtime when they don't have to, when there are people that are willing to fill those positions, but maybe get, hey, no, I'm sorry, we, don't, we can't use you because of X, Y, and Z. But yet, still, we have a high-paid position that was just, hey, here you go. Here go the keys and the badge. You know, let, let, let's be fair across the board. I, I, you know, in all my years of management, I, I have had an issue with people in positions that take and pick and choose based on personal preferences versus following the actual policy and procedures that are placed forth. I have gone up against my supervisors, owner operators, whatever the case might be, major corporations, because I'm, I'm not gonna stand for it and I'm not gonna stand for it here. I know I told y'all last time that I was on my way to moving out, but guess what? The Lord is good and I can move into another position where I can be regional and still stay home. So if that, chooses to be the path, I will be back again. Because I'm not gonna stand for it. I'm an advocate for our people, our returning citizens, for them to have equal and fair employment opportunities. We have a jail right now full of people that are getting ready to come out and they're gonna need employment. And I hope that the city will be just as receptive to them as they were to somebody else. And I, I mean that wholeheartedly. Because see, I'm not the one for the smoke and mirrors. Nobody is paying me but my job. I pay my bills, I don't get a cut from nobody. Because if I did, I, hey, please give it to me, because I'm waiting on it. The first of the month is get ready to roll around. You know, it is Thanksgiving. We are in that week. 
And there is a passage, a verse in the Bible, Proverbs 20, verse 3, that simply says, as soon as I can open my phone, see the Lord is trying to hold my tongue, but it's, it's just got to be said. Proverbs, I'm sorry, Proverbs 20, 17. Food gained by fraud is sweet to a man, but later his mouth is filled with gravel. I'm going to read that again. Proverbs 20, 17. Food obtained by fraud is sweet to a man, but later his mouth is filled with gravel, which basically means it looks good. It tastes good in the beginning, but after a while it starts tasting like rocks. So we're doing some fraudulent activity while we're trying to eat this food. Be prepared for it to get hard, and it's not going to come out. It's going to come out real hard. And it's not going to be as sweet as it was going in. I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you so much. Y'all have a blessed Thanksgiving. And I will see y'all at the next council meeting, possibly. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Mark Godaldig Yutrovsky. Mayor, council, and other neighbors, my Thanksgiving gift to you is good wishes and a sooner arrival at home. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker, Angela Britt. Ms. Britt? Angela Britt. Is Ms. Britt with us? I don't see Ms. Britt. Our next speaker is John Matthews. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Manager, and all members of Council. My name is John Matthews. Most of y'all know me as Chris Matthews. <clears throat> Sorry. I live at One Harbor Court, also known as Harbor Towers. I'm here today to speak about the maintenance and safety concerns about the parking garage at Two Harbor Court. This garage for the past few years has been a target for thieves and vandalism. Just last month, over 10 cars have had their license plates stolen, catalytic converters stolen, and this year even a lawyer held up at gunpoint and is carjacked. I, amongst many others, have spoken with people from the parking authority and other people in the city who explained to us that their hands are tied and it's not in the budget to have any cameras or security at any of the parking locations owned by the city. I'm asking all of you on council to help me find a way for the city to fit in their budget, ample lighting, security, and maintenance of all the city garages. Maybe even a private security guard who can travel amongst all of them. Excuse me. I invite each and every one of you to please come to our garage and look at it. It's filthy. The maintenance is horrible. There's busted glass on the fourth floor. It's been that way for three months. Each and every resident that lives in Harbor Towers pays $71 a month per parking space to have a car there. Nothing safe. I had my car broken into once, I've had my tag stolen, and I've had my bike vandalized, my motorcycle. I'm just asking that y'all find it in the budget to fix these things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Councilman Moody, sir, you have the floor. Th thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, my question is to the city manager uh, who who owns that garage Bob can you elaborate? yeah that's the city garage parking authority okay perhaps this new system that uh, that you shared with us that'll be implemented shortly the fuses system uh, I get a ton of complaints with that garage but other city garages as well that do not have attendance. Uh, can uh, you get back with staff and see if that could be incorporated 
uh, sooner or later somebody's going to get hurt in that garage. You're saying incorporate cameras in the garage? Yes. Yes, yes. we can certainly look at As part it. of the FUSIS system. Yes. Okay, thanks. And, and I would like to add, just based on the complaints that I've heard about that garage as well, do, do we do as a, as a part of um, quality control, do we do like a weekly, monthly ride around in some of these garages and just check out the, the, the state of the, the physical plant? Because I mean, if we have lights that are broken out and all those kinds yes. of things, glass, I mean, those are unsafe environments. And, and I know, you know, our folks work very hard. I'm just asking the question, do we have like a quality control schedule where we check our parking garages for safety and adequate lighting and things like that? Mr. Mayor, we'll uh, do a report back to you on what our status is, whether, excuse me, the police are doing any type of patrols, which we can certainly have them do um, when they're not on calls, but we can also um, check to see what staff does to help with maintenance. Okay, well, I, th I think that's a start, and I think that we, 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 we need the citizens uh, f um, that live in those environments to certainly bring us the information that we need so that we can take appropriate action because no one on this council wants any of our citizens to be in an unsafe environment. I can assure you of that. So we appreciate you coming forward, and we'll look for a report back on that. And also, Councilwoman Lucas Burke, ma'am, you have the floor. Right, thank you, Mayor. Um, in addition to um, the cameras, I, I would like to see, we, we don't ever hear any reports um, from the uh, parking authority. So if we could go forth, uh, maybe having someone who is the representative um, or chair of the parking authority to give maybe like a quarterly report of some of the things um, that they're finding in some of our parking garages and. Um, provide an update so that we'll know what's being hap um, you know, addressed with these situations. Yes, ma'am, we certainly will. And um, Mr. Mayor, I just want to make a correction. The Fuchsia system will uh, allow us to access existing cameras that like our traffic cameras. Once we move forward with the flock system, that will allow us to install additional cameras and be able to have that access as well in the garage. And the chief said it has been discussed. Mr. Moody, did you have another question, sir? Yes, the flock system, how, how soon do you think that will be implemented? Chief. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, sir. Chief. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, to answer your question, sir, we have already put that out for, uh, for bidding, so that uh, process is uh, ongoing that we expect that to be closing here soon and then for us to be able to move forward with that we're looking at having that hopefully fully uh, I guess uh, acquired hopefully first part of uh, first part of the year so within the first couple of months thank you yes sir. thank you chief Jenkins thank you chief our next speaker is miss Gloria Fox miss Fox ma'am you would state your name and address. You, you will have five minutes. Uh, how are y'all? Good, ma'am. Um, I'm Gloria Fox. I live at Harbor Towers. Could you also. put the microphone a little bit closer to your mouth? Yes. I live at Harbor Towers also. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was here to talk about the garage. Um, I love living down here. It's beautiful. I love the vibe. The only thing that's wrong is the parking, and we have four parking garages. None of them have security. None of them have cameras. I live over there and have to go to the naval base at 5 in the morning. It's dark. Yes, there are people hiding in the garage that you can see, and they're watching you. That is the scariest thing, just to go to work. Um, Everybody has had something done to their car there, almost everyone I can say. Like you said, catalytic converters, the tags. They have ripped a Jeep apart just to get in. Um, a lot of things have been stolen, uh, held up at gunpoint. Like he said, somebody is going to die there, seriously. 
and we need to do something about it before somebody does. Yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our, our next speaker is Denise Rovalli. Did I see your name right, ma'am? I like to make sure I pronounce people's names correctly. Hi, my name is uh, Denise. I, um, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Denise. I also reside at One Harbor Corps. Uh, my concerns is the garage. Um, I, I have been, had tags stolen. I've had stickers stolen, catalytic converters. Um, it's just not safe. I have a 16-year-old daughter. I'm a single mother. I have a 14-year-old son. I refuse to park in that parking garage. I will find spots in the meter parking. I'll park in another parking lot and we'll, we'll, we'll you know, walk back to the apartment because it's so unsafe. There's people hanging out behind pillars in there. I've been in there where there's been people standing there. And Portsmouth police are sitting outside of the parking garage in their cruisers. They don't go in there and walk around, drive around nothing. They just sit there. The, um, the gate, when you pull in, is, there is no gate. The gate has been taken down. Parking Authority said that they don't have it in their budget to replace the gate. So it's literally a free for all. Anybody can walk in there, drive in there whatsoever. And it's not just residents, it's people that take the ferry over that are parking there that are having stuff done to their car. And it's just, it's completely unsafe and something's gonna happen. And I feel that there should be money appropriated to not in addition to cameras and more am ample lighting, there's barely lights. Like I remember when I first moved there, one of the residents warned me, you have to park in a well-lit spot. If you don't go in a well-lit spot, your car will be broken into. And there's not many well-lit areas in that garage. And um, I just feel that in addition to you know, more lighting and cameras, that there should be somebody. I feel like the city can afford to pay somebody, a security company, to go in there and just do hourly rounds in all the garages just to ensure safety. There's people coming and going in there at all times of the day and night. And it's just, it's truly unsafe. And just as a mom, I'm here. My daughter just started driving, she's 16. She's not allowed to park in the garage. And we pay for that in our rent every month to be able to have a spot there, an assigned parking spot, and we're not able to use it because it's not safe. That's it. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all for coming forward. And so we'll expect to get that report back and what the next steps will be to make it secure, right, ma'am? Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Leon Hammonds. Are you signed up to speak, ma'am? No, no, we, we, you, you, you have to have signed up to speak. Oh, this is, right, right, but this is not, okay. but, but, but you would have to have because signed up. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Mr. Hammond, sir, you have the floor, sir. Happy Thanksgiving. Leon Hammond, Bowie Court. What is going on in Portsmouth? I guess it's the usual thing. What's wrong with the mic? What is going on in Portsmouth? That article that I read in the newspaper was very interesting. It was a long one from a past city manager. But lo and behold, one of the names that came up has popped up. And it's interesting, real interesting. Do we recycle people? Are we taking people from other cities and hiring them regardless of what the situation is and why? Are we a pass-through type city whereby we pay them, they stay here for a year, because they got another job coming up in 2024, evidently. Because somebody's going to pronounce something for them. But why are we doing that? We need to hire people that know what they're doing. Having education doesn't mean anything if you don't have the experience. 
regardless of who you are, you can have a PhD, but that don't mean you're a doctor. If you haven't operated, if you haven't prescribed a prescription. So the bottom line is, 2023, please get yourself together. Because I will be back next week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hammonds. Our next speaker is Mimi Terry. Ms. Terry, if you would come forward, state your name and address, and ma'am, you will have five minutes. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council, and Portsmouth family. My name is Mimi Terry, and I am the former Deputy City Manager and CFO for the, from the City of Portsmouth. I'm just here because I wanted to make some things crystal clear as I listen to the 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock meeting this afternoon. So that I am clear, the City Manager relieved me of my duties on Friday, September 23rd, without cause. However, she has the right and authority to do so in her position. As a matter of fact, she thanked me for assisting her in the transition into her new position. But since then, I've heard so many lies about me that I can't even keep up with them. And if I could just start with the gift cards. There was an order placed for 16,075 gift cards. They were purchased through income incentives called vanilla gift cards in denominations of $100 and $500. The count was provided by the staff with the city treasurer's office and the risk manager in finance. As a reminder, $12,000 were purchased. 4,429 were used. 7,571 were remaining in the denomination of 100. Out of the 4,075, 803 were used for social services. 3,272 in the denomination of $500 were remaining. The cards were ordered for the senior program, the youth incentives. The reason so many cards were ordered is because 11,000 seniors had been vaccinated. And out of the 13,000 youth age students, 5,000 of them had been vaccinated. Council approved the program on March 8th, 2022. Please refer back to the presentation if you are unsure or unaware. The one-time recurring payments were for the Alice category. There were 34,000 households identified for the Alice population. The Alice population is the asset limited, income constrained and employed. These were gonna be programs used from social services. They did not receive the turnout that they had hoped out of the 34,000 category residents that were identified in that population. I did not have access to the cards. The cards were held by the risk manager at the time who has been since terminated without the audit being performed. An audit is not an analysis. Those are two separate things. There were 12 SOPs. SOPs are standard operating procedures that were provided in April when council said, make sure you do not run out of supplies. We should understand what a chain of custody means as it relates to cards and any funds associated with such. The cards are now sitting in several 
places with no accountability or internal control. Several third parties hold them. Social services, police, and the city treasurer. Allegations need to stop. Trumped up charges need to stop. And intimidating employees by lying and saying their terminations will happen is unacceptable. Deal with the real issues. For hiring employees that may not be qualified, sit in city leadership positions. Investigate something that is worthwhile. Services to the citizens and how we care for services are the priority. Let's not forget it. Cease and desist with the lies. I'm not here to answer any questions. Thank you, ma'am. Once again, I want to thank all the citizens for coming this evening. I want to wish everyone a safe, enjoyable holiday season. This meeting is adjourned.